And as mopping up continues after the devastating flooding, we of course are getting a clearer picture of the extent of the damage, how much it's going to cost to repair and how long it's actually going to take. The estimates of damage to agriculture alone in the Western Cape, it's staggering. Conservatively, 1.4 billion rand. Let's bring in Yanni Stradom, who is the CEO of Agri Western Cape. Mr. Stradom, thank you so much for joining us. This is absolutely devastating news. I wonder if you could break down this 1.4 billion rand in damages to us. Yeah, good evening, Sally, and good evening to the viewers. <clears throat> yeah, we in the Western Cape, we're fortunate to have a Department of Agriculture and also our disaster management team that's <clears throat> that's been working around the clock to 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 gather information and to get to these estimates. Um, so yeah, um, as we, we all can recall, in, in June we also had uh, more than one billion rand worth of uh, uh, damages, uh, flood damages. And now this uh, staggering 1.4 billion as well. Um, and uh, according to our information, uh, areas like the Overberg uh, as well as Cape Winelands, uh, not all the information has been included yet. So <clears throat> that figure uh, will definitely increase as well. So, but uh, yeah, the largest uh, portion of that 1.4 at this stage has been um, uh, from the Winelands, Cape Winelands area. Uh, the estimate, and then secondly, the Overberg area and Overstrand area that's um, that's making up that mm. uh, enormous amount uh, that's been calculated. I, I wonder if you could break it down in terms of the, the sort of the harvest and the crops. I mean, I was reading that um, the grain harvest might be impacted by the floods, for example. So talk to me about the different produce and the different sectors. Yeah, to start off, um, <clears throat> why it's important, uh, uh, the winter grain uh, in our province is that uh, the Western Cape produces uh, around about 51% uh, of all wheat uh, in the country. So we are a very large role player. And uh, the wheat harvesting season will be starting in the next uh, four to six weeks. So it's critical for us to access um, those those fields and and to be able to harvest so that, that is critical <clears throat> the other two crops uh, or uh, that's been affected is, is canola uh, which the farmers already has been started to harvest and in probably in the next two weeks will definitely have to uh, harvest and, and that's a concern to get into those fields and then also the barley um, uh, within the next four weeks. So for us in the Western Cape, the next six weeks is, is really critical <clears throat> to to be able to to complete the, or to start and to complete the harvest harvesting of the winter grain. Um, uh, as we, uh, the potential uh, of a very good uh, uh, harvest uh, was a, a part of the estimates of of Grain SA as well, the commodity organisation in their first round. Um, of estimates. So, yeah, um, given the good uh, winter rain season that we had, uh, it was, and I still want to believe, still promising for, for our grain farmers in the province, as long as we can access those fields and, and get that produce to the, to the silos. So am I correct that it's not actual damage, you know, it's not like the, the produce has been ruined, it's just about getting easy access so you can harvest properly? Uh, m mostly yes, but unfortunately in areas <clears throat> in the Bredalstorp area, Overberg area, there are some of those fields that, um, that's that been flooded and, and, and the wheat is and, and the grain mm. is still standing in the water. Uh, and if that continues for the next two, three uh, to five days, uh, then unfortunately that crop will be damaged, yes. And are, is that the sum total of crops that you're worried about? Or are there, you know, you mentioned the winelands. I obviously thought of grapes, but I don't know about the harvesting season. Mm -hmm. So you tell me, are there, you know, are there other fruits, vegetables uh, that are being impacted? Or is it more sort of structural infrastructure damage now we're talking about? Yeah, I, th I think if we look at the, um, the, the, the table grapes in the Dedurings area and the winelands, the wine grapes, and then also uh, another hugely affected area is the Grabau Elgin area, which, which is a, 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 a fruit producing area. Uh, there's a lot of infrastructure damage. And if I say infrastructure, orchards been washed away, that includes um, probably netting infrastructure and, and, and the other important one, irrigation uh, um, infrastructure so that that's going to be quite costly to replace uh, and and will definitely negatively impact it 
uh, low uh, lying areas like uh, where we in, in, in the Philippi area where um, vegetables are being produced uh, definitely that will also impact it but I think the yeah the, 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 the majority of the cost that's been calculated is allocated towards uh, infrastructure that's been uh, Damage and that will have to be replaced. Are exports going to be affected and are the prices of produce likely to rise as a result? Yeah, Sally, I think that's a bit early to say. Um, uh, I don't foresee it uh, uh, currently with the information that we we have at hand. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I, I would rather say let, let, let's just wait for uh, the harvesting season to start. Mm -hmm. But I still think uh, that, uh, yeah, uh, I don't think that will be probably the case at this stage. But uh, I'll rather wait for the, um, the the second round of estimates from the commodity organisation before making assumptions. All right, fair enough. Um, you know, at the same time, of course, um, agriculture is dealing with this massive avian influenza outbreak. Um, you know, at least 30 percent, I think, um, of the, the industry is being impacted. A million chickens have already had to be culled. I know the Western Cape has also been hit hard. So if you add that to the flood damage, um, what are the prospects for your sector? I mean, just, just how bad is it for you? <laughs> yeah, if we paint that picture, it's, it's quite a, a, a morbid picture. But uh, I think um, given the, uh, the resilience of our farmers and farm workers, uh, I'm still positive that we will overcome these challenges as well. Uh, but yeah, <clears throat> the bird flu issue is, is quite severe in our province as well. In, in, in the winter time, around about May, we had also a huge outbreak here. And uh, currently, yeah, we are in discussions with uh, AgriSA, our national organization, and, and also to engage with the commodity organizations, the poultry organization and to see why, what um, mitigation strategies we can implement. Uh, just one that comes to mind is the whole issue about vaccines <clears throat> that, uh, that we need uh, as soon as possible and get registered as well. So, yeah, but uh, farmers, <laughs> we have a lot of challenges, uh, not uh, only um, nature, uh, but all uh, a lot of other challenges. But, mm. uh, yeah, I'm still positive. Uh, they're still ensuring food security in our country, and that's off to our farmers and farm workers. Through all these yeah. challenges, they still keep on producing. And, uh, yeah, like I said in the beginning, they uh, their resilience is, is, is notable yeah. and, and commendable. It's a tough business. This 1.4 billion in damages, and we know this is conservative, sadly. Where's the money going to come from? Who's going to be paying for all of this? How's it going to work? Now, that's a tricky question because um, we still await the certification of the, uh, the, the, the disaster declaration of the June floods. Uh, I know Parliament has been uh, um, submitted and approved it, but now it needs to be certified and, and, and then one can apply to the National Department as well as Treasury. Um, and, and this uh, round will follow the same route. Um, and uh, without being skeptical, uh, I'm also very concerned of where that money will come from uh, to address the, at least the infrastructure uh, challenges and, 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 and implement preventative measures in terms of river uh, on river banks and so forth. So, uh, and to yeah, and to restore um, uh, the the road accesses, uh, the bridges, and all of that. So it is a concern for me as well, Sally. Uh, um, but yeah, let me not be negative and let's be positive, and hopefully the funds will be made available. But the process of uh, uh, the disaster declaration still needs to follow. All right. Well, good luck with it all. It does sound like there's a lot um, of work ahead. And thank you so much for taking time to chat to us this evening. Much appreciated. Yanni Stradham is the CEO of Agri Western Cape. I did not know that 51% of South Africa's wheat comes from the Western Cape. And he's talking about wheat, canola and barley. Those harvests need to happen in the next four to six weeks. And access to flooded areas is a problem. It's something they're worried about. If they can get in, most of it should be saved. But of course, there's massive infrastructure damage as well across agricultural sectors. 1.4 billion rand.